This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. One more day left in the NBA All-Star break. Then they begin things out of the break on Thursday. So one final time left to talk some futures before the second half of the season gets underway. And to talk about the NBA for today, it's a familiar voice talking about a new sport. That's Ryan Williams. We're going to have Ryan on today to talk about some NBA for the first time. First of many, I am sure. We're going to talk about his his NBA betting process, talk about some futures coming out of the All-Star break, and let you know where he sees value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Of course, no Ryan from NFL season here on covering the spread. But now talking some NBA as well. Ryan, it's fun to get you on the show here during the NFL offseason too. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Jim. I can't believe we still got one more day, huh? one more day right. before uh, we can get back into the NBA uh, NBA streets uh, for for the rest of the season. But yeah, no, I'm excited to be here, excited to talk to you as always. It was a fun NFL season for us. And why don't we just parlay that uh, into the NBA season, maybe baseball when that kicks off here in just over a month. Um, which is crazy. Um, uh, yeah. tee off, I should say, yeah. but uh, yeah, man, we uh, we're, we're happy to get after it and let, let's let's have at it. I'm not sure I'm quite ready for baseball yet, still need some like more chill time post NFL because like Daytona <laughs> 500 week is not a rest week for me, that's like a chaos week, so I need okay. a couple more like chill weeks and then I can talk, I can get back into strikeout props and stuff like that for baseball. So I got to get warmed up first, you know, send me out the bullpen, uh, get me warmed up a bit, but then we can do that for sure. But excited to talk some NBA for you. How are you killing time uh, during the all-star break? Because there's no NFL right now. Um, not sure if you're a hockey guy, but for me, it's been uh, a little dead in a good way. Yeah, no, it is. And, you know, it's always funny, you know, especially Jim you know, talking about significant other, right? You're like, why? Right. You, you know, she knows <laughs> I'm football, like basketball right. season comes around. She's used to that. But now it right. starts getting into the scenarios. She's like, why Why is NASCAR on the TV? Like, what <laughs> are we doing here? Like, are you really that big of a DJ? Or, yes. and I'm just like, it's the Daytona 500. Like, there's literally nothing else going on. Uh, they moved it to a Monday, which was, you know, even more stellar. It was like, let, let's go, let's get after it. Uh, Cause you're not uh, competing with all-star weekend and things like that. So yeah, man, uh, it was, it was, it's, it's fun, you know, to, especially to dabble in the sports, um, you know, where one it's, you know, I feel like NASCAR has kind of picked up steam. You know, there's a way that you attack the Daytona 500 and things like that. Um, and people are getting more into it. But then, you know, two else, it's just it's just better for the community um, yeah. with eyeballs just being on, you know, DFS in general. And I just feel like, you know, it's a little bit of fun to to be able to have, especially when it's a sport that you don't cover um, because you look at things right. differently. Right. Um, and especially when you see something like a crash with, you know, whatever it was, eight laps to go right. or whatever that completely changes the slate. Like those are the things and types of variances that I love, Jim. So I hated uh, it because Ryan Blaney was in it. Or Martin Tricks Jr. was in it. It was the worst for me. That yeah, was awful. Yeah. <laughs> I had both of those drivers in my lineups. So don't, don't you worry. Uh, but still like the sweat, like, you know, yeah. what what kind of, you know, sport like that? Can you have a sweat, you know, all the way down with multiple, you know, lineup changes and things changing in first? Like I'm the type of person that I try not to watch my lineups, you know, until yeah. it's kind of all over. NBA, you got to be paying attention. But like right. with Daytona, it's like you could drive yourself no, crazy yeah. um, just checking in on that lineup the whole time. So you got to wait till end. So step one is getting you to watch Daytona. Step two, uh, before you know it, uh, Ryan's going to be grinding truck series top five bets. So just <laughs> if it's around the corner, uh, I guarantee you. <laughs> Our job for today is talk some NBA futures because big inflection point in the season as things ramp up and teams kind of buckle down coming out of the all-star break. We'll talk to Ryan about the Milwaukee Bucks, seeing if this is a good spot to buy low on them or if they're just going to keep on doing what they've been doing recently. We'll talk about uh, NBA finals market, a couple divisional markets and the MVP as well. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. We are here every weekday, Monday through Friday, breaking down whatever it may be. NBA, NHL, NASCAR, formula one, just around the corner, EP, 
ATL, all right here in this exact same place. So go subscribe to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and you can check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you want some PGA thoughts for this weekend, you can find those by going to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast, the Heat Check Podcast, myself and Brandon Gadula, breaking out our favorite bets and daily fantasy plays for this weekend in the Mexico Open at Vidanta Vallarta. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your first bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA, must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-777. 770 stop in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, Ryan, this is the first time we've had you on to talk NBA. So I want to dig into your process a bit here first before we talk about that and kind of get get your uh, read of you as an NBA better first. Are you primarily a prop better because that's a lot of overlap with daily fantasy? Are you checking out sides and totals? Well, what's your primary look when it comes to NBA betting? Yeah, so it kind of touched on this when we were just kind of shooting the stuff um just talking about uh what we do in general uh in this kind of lull time and for me it 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 does lean you know more more of the player props and you know getting in action on there we kind of talked about that in the nfl season as well too like that's that's kind of my lean the market's kind of gotten sharper um in the nfl on sides and totals and you can still find advantages you know in the prop market area um especially on you know on on rookies on guys who are just coming in and with nba you know, it's kind of it's it's a usage game. And like this is one of the unique aspects where like it's so individualized that that's that's like where I feel like the money is on, on these props. You know, if you can get if you in the news is just carrying it all day. Right. So, you, you know, first I'm looking at, you know, the state of the slate like the night before and like, you know, is is a team going to be on a back to back? Like, did something happen in the game that like might prevent somebody from playing or something like that. And you try and weigh those options there and then look at the props that are being set, you know, early on in the day. And then if you can get, you know, early on news, oh, somebody's going to be sitting out. And yeah, people might think that that's the delight corollary of, oh, who's going to be the next starter? But that actually, you know, okay, the Aaron Fox is going to be out. Okay, like I'm looking at some bonus assist totals like immediately, you know, and they and things of that nature because you want to see who the ancillary guys are. Um, it's been huge in Philly, right, with Joel Embiid being out and, like, just hammering on Tobias Harris props um, and Tyrese Maxey's props there at the beginning, like, were, were very valuable. I mean, even Kelly Oubre um, was stepping up to the fold. And so that that's where it gets exciting for me is to, like, take those pieces. And it is kind of like a correlation with DFS. You hit on it, Jim. Um, for me, if I am playing DFS, it's like looking at who I'm going to be rostering and then where, where are their props coming in at like where can i find advantages here like who are the matchups against oh this is a tough defensive rating am i going to be getting uh in on some three-point props um it, it just is so fun to be looking at it in that standpoint um very kind of nerdy analytically but um it, it's a lot more fun uh than, than taking the sides and totals it's been a, it's been you know pretty pretty sharp and pretty tough um with sides and totals you know as of late there's there's been a lot of uh a lot of good teams who, who've been able to cover um, this year who are bottom of the barrel still. But uh, but yeah, I love getting on the prop side of things with when it comes to NBA. 
Yeah, with sides and totals, there's always very liquid markets, a lot of money in those markets. It's going to be tough to bet those unless you are very good at it, um, which is why a lot of people don't bother, and I don't blame them, honestly. I tend to like those markets quite a bit for NFL specifically. Uh, I like betting money lines for baseball, but that's my individual process. I know for a lot of people, there are a lot more markets you can take advantage of in the NBA uh, when it comes to player props. So giving yourself more outlets where the books may make a mistake that's always what you want to do and give yourself more chances for that. So I think for a lot of casual bettors uh, or people who are just getting into this, or if you're like Ryan and come from a daily fantasy background, props are going to be a really good avenue for thinking about the game in a pretty logical way, but still finding some hopefully good value out there as well. Now, Ryan, let's kick things off here by talking about your local team. Uh, I know you're not a Bucks fan, but you do live <laughs> up in Milwaukee. So let's talk about the Bucks because yeah. interesting team right now. Things have been a little shaky since Doc Rivers took over. They're plus 650 to win the NBA Finals, and they're 3-1 to one to win the East. Now, you could pitch this two ways. It could be, hey, it's a good buy-low spot uh, because they're struggling. We know the talent is there, etc. Or it could be, ruh things ain't great. <laughs> Which side do you fall on here at the Bucks? Is it a stay away for you, buy-low time? What's your read on them as things stand right now? Yeah, the, the number is getting, you know, to the point where it is really nice. Uh, this has kind of been like a stay away kind of venture for me. But when we're looking at six and a half to one, when you're thinking about how they opened the year uh, with Boston be, being being the favorite there, I think it is interesting because the East is the East is wide open. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, Jim. But, you know, with it being that wide open, like, yeah, you have two of the top 75 players to ever play the game on your roster right now, like you know, damn the coach, like these guys can go out there and, and do it just about against anybody. Right. And and I think that, you know, the thing for them is that they're going to have to stay healthy. I mean, they really cannot afford um, an injury to a key piece. Chris Middleton has been, you know, banged up and they're really going to need him come playoff time. Like, you know, if anything happens to to Damian or, or Giannis to miss significant time like that, that's going to be, you know, tough sledding for them. So I do think they need to dig deep. I do think as, as well that they are in a hole that they need to figure out how to dig themselves out of um, because the you know the the spotlight is not going to change on them and I think they got a really nice reprieve you know they had the the Memphis fallout right before all-star break where the sky is falling and then all of a sudden you know you got Damian Lillard showing out in the all-star you know the <laughs> all-star game the three-point contest Giannis is you know they're right there with them um, and it's a lot of pressure on this team a lot of pressure on Giannis you know he, he kind of you know wanted wanted a change and talked about competing for championships and multiple championships. And that's why I'm going to stay here. And so, you know, I, I am, you know, going to want to see them kind of put it to paper. Now, when you're talking, thinking about, you know, people want the, want the stats and this historical data and things like that, like you don't need to look any further than doc, doc rivers resume in the playoffs. Like that does not give me any like credence to want to be betting on this team in any capacity when it comes to a championship. Uh, now I see you have the East conference winner odds pulled up there like three to one to win the East. You know, now you start to see that there is some correlation and merit to why they are six and a half to one to, to win the finals there, because, you know, I still think that price is fair. Um, I think that's the right price for them in the Eastern Conference. Um, so if I was trying to take a long shot on them, I would just I would try and just lean on the six and a half versus the three to one there um, to win the finals. But, yeah, I think they I think they are in a little bit of predicament um, and they are going to have to lean on these superstars and we'll see if they can get it done. Um, but right now, I feel like for me, it, it's creeping to the point where I want to get in a sprinkle, but it, it's been a stay away for me um, until they can, you know, put show show me something and put it together. How close is it to being a buy for you? Like if they were to get out to plus 750 or so, would that be a spot where you'd be willing to fire? Or is that still, you still want to see it on the court before you officially buy in? Yeah, I think seven, 758 would okay. definitely make me think about it for sure. Um, you know, I feel, you know, I, I, I tend to feel like, especially if they come out, like, here's the thing, Jim, it's like, you're going to have to, it's chicken and egg, right? So I feel like if they come out of the all-star break, like right now, there's all the hype. If they can, if they lose like one or two of those games, but they're looking solid or they're, you know, they're getting beat at the end or whatever, but that kind of changes the mood on people and we sure. can get that seven and a half. I'll be willing to take on, take that on. Um you know, before there is some type of like injury or something like that, because you're just going to lose all that value. But, uh, but yeah, I'll be monitoring it for sure. 
um it 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 is just tough i mean it's a tough storyline that that's been going on here but you know they like i said they do have perennial talents um doc rivers is is that type of coach like the playoffs are not in in question necessarily it's just how far are they going to go and and you know stop throwing your guys under the bus and i don't want to see them rally around it but this is a player's league and so the players have the chance to you know combat any issues that they are having yeah, bad vibes for sure. Uh, but we'll see how things turn there for the Bucks. So not quite a value at plus six fifty, but worth monitoring to see if things turn around or if that number does extend a bit further. The Celtics current favorites to win the NBA Finals. They're plus two thirty, followed by the Nugget Nuggets at plus four forty. Any value for you in the NBA Finals market right now, Ryan? Uh, value wise, just because of how wide open it is, you know, we have to look at some of these other Eastern conference teams, uh, and, you know, the Knicks have been so stellar and I feel like, you know, at them and it's 20 to one now, I believe it was 18 to one a couple days ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, you know, even the longer shot odds, but, um, Jalen Brunson has been absolutely incredible and the team's been absolutely incredible, uh, albeit with Julius Randle not being in the picture. Now, you know, there's the caveat there for anybody that's followed the Knicks any closely during Julius Randle's tenure, like tenure, he has not been able to show up, you know, come crunch time and come playoffs. And, you know, I've seen the argument out there, is this team a better team without Julius Randle? I don't necessarily believe that. Um, Hopefully he's been, you know, he's going through his recovery period and wants to get in on the action um, because I feel like he's just such a a vital piece for coming back in there just makes them so much you know the depth there would just be incredibly insane um they could possibly get og and anobi back who they you know traded for this year and and i just you know like their roster and you know there's always that you got to have that guy who just can show up at the end of the games and and really close it out for you and that's Jalen. and the rest of the team is pretty deep and they played the top teams uh in the east fairly well as well too so i i do like getting some action long shot on on the knicks which is kind of weird to say uh given recent history but you know this definitely is a new look team and thibodeau has some uh playoff coaching experiences as well for a long time so he's definitely got these guys ready to go yeah it sounds like randall still not clear to practice as of yet but he's getting closer to that and anobi said he'll be back for the playoffs as well so team that's playing pretty decently right now and should be getting some key pieces back for that playoff run could potentially key them so ryan is on the knicks at 20 to 1 to win the nba finals let's talk about a pretty fun divisional race right now maybe this is selfish as a uh, closet timberwolves fan but uh let's talk here about the northwest division where right now the wolves are minus 125 Thunder are plus 190. Nuggets are plus 380. Obviously, the regular season, not the biggest emphasis for the Nuggets, which is why the number is a bit longer. But Wolves are playing pretty well. Any value for you in uh, this divisional race right now, Ryan? Yeah, the Thunder have been really... uh you know, just an impressive story. I mean, just knowing where they where they were a couple of years ago, compiling draft picks and, and getting a roster like this. And you love, you know, love how Chet Holmgren's been playing. And it, it is unfortunate just because Wimby is just Wimby. Uh, and he probably has the award locked up already. Yeah. But um, Chet at five to one is still pretty interesting just with what he's been averaging over the course of the year. So I, I do I do like the Thunder. Um, You know, the thing about Denver, and I think most people will look at this and be like, how are we not just slamming their odds right now at plus 380? Um, There is a a decent enough gap there. And the other thing just comes down to it is I I just don't know that um, Jokic and and this team like really even they don't seem they just kind of going through the motions right now. They're defending champs. And like, I think they know what they have and and they're fine with that. Like they're they're going to be in games, but they're also like going to t- take games off and they're just like we'll just get to the postseason we know what roster we have we want to get in there healthy and we'll, we'll figure it out and so you know they're sitting at four right now uh right right behind the clippers in in the western conference in general and i think they'll kind of stay you know kind of stay that path but these younger teams are are really hungry you can tell i mean the timberwolves are just taking the they're just taking the bull by the horns they're taking the regular season so seriously i think chris finch deserves some nods at you know uh coach of the year um, if this really keeps up and Anthony Edwards has been great, the two bigs has been working out, which I was very, uh, I was not a fan of, um, but I, or was I, anybody I, in Minnesota, believe me. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, you know, why, why I still like the Timberwolves, um, is that, you know, even though at the end of games, I think, you know, they, they have a pretty, 
they don't have a great offensive rating, you know, coming the fourth quarter, but their defensive rating, like they're number two in the league. Uh, they were number two in the league for the last six games going into the going into the All Star break, and I think they have the number one defensive rating um, for for some time. So that that's that's really what it comes down for me is if they can get this offense figured out. But this is such a good team, uh, you know, Conley there with the with the experience that he has, Gobert, you know, some of the experience that he has too to kind of get these younger guys and the way Anthony Edwards has been playing the 125 minus 125 is favorable. I'd be willing to, you know, pay the, pay the book on that. Yeah. Where things stand right now, the wolves have a one and a half game lead over the thunder in the Northwest, uh, the nuggets three games back. So not a huge deficit there, but as you mentioned, they have bigger goals uh, and they're trying to gear things up for the postseason. That's their big emphasis. Whereas the wolves, like it's been a long time since they've gotten, you know, ha- been able to, be in a good position entering the playoffs. So I understand why they're going all out during the regular season as well. But uh, some interesting dynamics there as always when it comes to divisional betting. But uh, Ryan does think the Wolves could be a value of minus 125 right now. Let's wrap things up here by talking MVP. We're right now. Nikola Jokic is minus 125 to win the award. SGA sitting at plus 210. Then it dips all the way down to Luka at plus 850. When you look at this market, Ryan, any players you're willing to bet right now, or is is it really kind of just too dependent on how hard Jokic decides to go down the stretch here? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Jokic kind of controls his own destiny here. I do think it is it, it is kind of funny that Embiid goes out, and so we just clearly we just make Jokic the next favorite because right. he's the big and he's been doing it. I mean, his his numbers have still been there. Uh, but you can tell like this, the, the, you know, the way this Denver team has been playing that like he's just kind of going out there, you know, through the motions. They've had a couple like snafus and lapses and first halves where, you know, they've kind of needed to get it together down towards the end, um, which and, and just the nature of the award, like giving Joe Kick the award again. Um, I feel like they're going to they're <laughs> they're going to be trying to find ways to not have this be the case. And so, you know, Shay, if he's carrying his team strong. Um, at two to two to one, definitely like that. You know, when you're looking at the, th- the thunder to win the north we- the northwest um, at 195, but you could get Shea at plus 210 there if he's willing to, you know, go for the number one seed. I, I think there has some merit. Luke is also interesting at at eight and a half. I mean, he- his team is a little bit far down there in the standings, so he would need to really um, get some wins piled up for, for him to, you know, be in that consideration, but it's still eight and a half to one. And the numbers that he's been putting up have been absolutely ridiculous. Kyrie's only played in 33 games this season. Like we all know that it's his team and he has to carry on this team. And I feel like adding pieces like Gafford and PJ Washington will only help to like pad his stats and actually help with the, with the win totals as they create a little bit more depth there. So he, he is an interesting one for, for me as well, too. Um, I think the other, yeah, I mean, I think you, you know, if we're talking about the Bucks futures, like there is some merit to consider Giannis. I mean, he's been incredible in, in these games, even if they've, you know, losing to Memphis, um, the numbers that he's putting up are just ridiculous. If those start to translate to wins and it's because of him and they get the number one seed in the East, um, definitely big enough name and big enough storyline around the Bucks where people will just catapult Giannis into that conversation. So that's actually, you know, I'd, I'd prefer getting some action on Giannis and VP. Yeah. Um, than any other Bucks bet because if they are in that conversation, like it's so it is, it doesn't feel like it's that wide open, but it is a wide open race right now. Um, that you know, getting somebody close to 10 to 1 at this point is is very nice. Yeah, it gets you access to the Bucks, but also allows you to avoid any of the potential postseason Doc Rivers bad juju stuff. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in that regard. So it could make Giannis pretty interesting there at nine to one to win the MVP right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is Ryan Williams. As mentioned, check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, a lot of fun talking some NBA for you. I feel like I did learn something myself there, which is always a delight for sure. Looking forward to doing it again in the very near future. Yeah, can't wait, Jim. Always good to be with you, man. We'll have Later. you on talk some uh, NFL free agency, NFL draft. We're going to be yeah. knocking down the door plenty over the next couple of months. Looking forward to that for sure. You can find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim Sonis. And check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with all your bets across Wednesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for the first slate out of the NBA All-Star break. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast. Network. 